morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's Soul Saint here, and I wanted to talk to you guys about where we are at in the fusion for Bambus himself. So, as of right now, we are at the time of this recording, October the 2nd. Let's go, October. We're going to have a pretty fantastic salt over, you know what I'm saying? Um, we have a couple of events that have already concluded, so I wanted to kind of give you guys a breakdown of where you should be at along the way. So, normally around this time frame between like Monday, Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday, probably like Tuesday, Wednesday, it's just pretty much the halfway point of this fusion, right? So as a result of that, I would like to kind of give you guys like a heads up of where you should be at and where you got, like, what should you have going on in your account in terms of progression? So uh, Thursday through Saturday, uh, Thursday through Sunday, excuse me, we should have been finishing up the Dragon Tournament, right? So that's one Petrifa, Petrifaya. I don't know if it's exactly if, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then, of course, uh, along the way, we also had Champ Training and then a Summer Rush too, right? So I wanted to break this down in a way that would give you guys kind of like some insight as to where you should be at in terms of like the champion listings and then go from there, right? Now, I actually had some interesting circumstances kind of happen to my account when I was doing a part of some of these events. So, let me explain. Um, for the Fusion, all the, all the events so far and tournaments that I've had pretty much kind of kept me on pace with what's going on. However, one of those was the Summon Rush, right? I did so happen to go for the uh, the Epic as a part of like the extra bit of rewards down the road. So it's basically, I cut off like a third of the, the progression requirements that you're going to need to do in order to get the Fusion, right? Just get that out of the way for me. That's what I did, right? But if you didn't, this is where you should be at. So, uh, amongst all of the Force Rares that you should have, I believe right now you should have a total of three. And if we look back at the calendar, we should have at least a total of three different events that you should be either progressing in or half progressed in that you're already done with, which was Dungeon Divers number one, Classic Arena number one, and then of course Iron uh, Ice Golem, excuse me, uh, tournament, which is currently active right now. I'm already ahead and, and pretty much done as of Monday. I finished actually yesterday, so I had like a whole day to not do anything, which is kind of nice. Or evening, I guess. Sunday going into Monday. Uh, so yeah, this bas basically makes sense. I'm, I'm already like, you know, three out of four for Meat Carver to log. Okay, so that's good. Now, when it comes to our spirit counterpart, I have one and only one. So I, my first initial thought when I saw this, like, I should be on par with like the rest of them. Why, why don't I have like maybe two, maybe even three, you know? And then I looked at the schedule and sure enough, there's nothing else besides the artifact enhancement at once. So rest assured, if you haven't already, you know, pretty much beat out where you're at with, all, with your rares and where you should be at at this point in time, Rest assured that you are only supposed to be at one completed as of this, as of right now, you know? Now, I looked at the uh, voids, and I was like, I have two, okay? Where am I at with this? We have champion training tournament. Okay, that's one. And then champion training, or uh, summon rush, which is two. I'm good there. That's great. And then, last but not least, I had uh, the Petrifia, which I have two. And I was like, wait a minute, where'd that come from? And I didn't realize it, but while I was summoning and basically acquiring my points for both the Void Rare and the uh, Epic, because, you know, I had, like, an enhanced uh, bonus that you could have got, like, at a couple extra points, like 50, like, up there in the 5K, right? I ended up pulling a Petrifia along the road. What does this mean for me? So what this means for me is I can take any of these three coming events that are going to happen tomorrow or forward and basically say, I don't even want to do it. And so I made that conscious decision to take a look at where am I at with uh, this particular event. And as of right now, the only other two options I have is the Spider Tournament, which is never a bad one in my opinion, and then Dungeon Divers number two. So I'm thinking about it this way. Dungeon Divers three is one event that I am still going to be a participant in. Uh, if I was to do this without the mindset of that I have Malkith right, already, right? So if I didn't have him, I would need to be able to do the other three. Well, if that's the case, Dungeon Divers number three and Spider Tournament kind of coincide with each other pretty well. So I was like, all right, that's a double dip that I don't necessarily have to negate in any capacity. So that's that's one I would like to keep. Same thing is also true for Fire Knight and Dungeon Divers number two. Okay, so those are some overlaps where I'd get some value out of my, uh, you know, getting my double dips here and there, right? And then I looked at Art Fact Enhancement number three, and I was like, well, this one is just a straight up isolated uh, event or, or tournament that I don't even have to do. So now as a result of pulling that, that rare, I can just drop that one. Or if you're one of those type of people that's like, I don't want to deal with any of the Dungeon Diver events, period, because they're so extraneous. By all means, you can take it off. But for me, I'm thinking I might take off Artifact Enhancement number three. Now, Dungeon Divers number two does overlap a little bit with Ice Golem and Fire Knight, primarily Fire Knight. So I think I'm still going to commit to that because I wouldn't mind farming some more resources in Ice Golem Tournament as well, or, or just in Ice Golem in general, as well as Fire Knight. You know, I got to get more Savage pieces. I could use some more Curse pieces. I could use some more of all these different set bonuses that I can get my hands on from both of those two uh, stages or those two dungeons. So this may be a, a great area for me to, although it is helping me for this fusion, it helps me prioritize the growth of my account from a gear standpoint. So maybe that's something I could see some value in. 
Uh, champ, uh, champ training is something that's a little bit, uh, it was a bit nuanced on the previous one. So this one's an event. It's a little bit different in terms of like how they have their bonuses or where you can get points at. It's going to be a little bit slightly different compared to the tournament. That's something to keep in mind. However, this tournament that we just recently passed, I ended up pushing all the way past up to like the 10k range. As a matter of fact, I'll just show you. Uh, and the reason why was something that is... I talk about it all the time on my account in terms of like uh, one thing that I'm noticing that I'm in desperate need of all the time is Lego books. And to be honest with you, uh, they gave us a pretty big incentive for it. Now, they did have the primal shards, which debatably are not that great. Or to, It depends on your purview about how you view uh, the primal shards themselves. But I don't really look at them as like a high value for me right now. Getting a minted would be nice, but it's not mandatory for my account, right? Uh, whereas Lego books, I am always in need for it. As a matter of fact, I have a whole list of champions that I would like to bring up and improve and see if I can, you know, enhance their quality, enhance their performance. And a lot of that's going to be predicated upon getting their books finished, you know. Say, for instance, you got your access to a Ronda, who I've been having a lot of fun with lately, but I'm missing out on an extra 20% damage from her A2 or the 20% damage from the A3 or the, you know, the extra 20 from just the entire A1. You know, that that's, that's numbers or, or like stat values that you know, and cool down, all that, all those values that you would get from booking a champion are now available to you because you have those legendary books. So legendary books, hot commodity, something I need a lot of, right? So I actually went on my way for them, right? And with an event coming up, if they do something similar where there's like a big incentive for me to farm an event like that, that actually puts me in a precarious situation where now I have to decide, am I just going to get every single rare and, and just kind of have an extra epic along the way? Or do I want to give up another you know, alternative uh, event or tournament that I don't need to participate in. And I looked at it this way. Well, since I have the Epic and I'm not really farming for the Epic specifically, uh, maybe I could do a showcase on it. I'm not really uh, excited about it. Although I will say that Malkith is the uh, uh, one champion between the two uh, Epics right now that seem to have a pretty good value in terms of if you didn't have someone like Rector Draft, he would be a viable alternative because he's the only other res that's an Epic at the moment within that faction for Knight's Res. So it was kind of nice. It was kind of nice to see, right? However, like, I have Rector, so it's kind of like, well, I don't know if I necessarily need it. I'm not sure if you guys would like to see something like that. So if you do, please let me know in the comments because I, I, I'm not entirely sure and I would I have the means to do so. So it's something I'm going to have to make a conscious decision to, to kind of like showcase and see if there's any value for him on any account at different stages of the game. So please let me know. But with that being said, my thought process was this. Well, I got extra. I technically can drop the two turn uh, the Spider Tournament and the Artifact Enhancement since I got a duplicate here, and I would be perfectly okay with Petrify. As of right now, I'm thinking, all right, we'll drop Artifact Enhancement in three. I could save my silver for something more important that I care about down the road, like maybe a new clan boss team that I'm working in the works with that are going to use some epics that everybody has access to. That might be on the road, you know? Uh, and then for the Void Champions, well, I still need to get at least three. Remember, I, I have the Epic, so I could I could just only have to worry about three of each of these champions. I could drop Champion Chase, so instead of just pulling my shards all willy-nilly, I could just save them for a rainy day. Now, mind you, this is the, also the period where we're going to have 2x Ancient, so I'm a little bit more incentivized maybe to trying to get some some summons there and i'm not entirely sure if i want to or if i'm if i'm i'm down to maybe we splurge a little bit you know it's been a while since we pulled some shards right and that's the conundrum you're gonna face when it comes to dealing with these kind of fusions you're gonna have to do not only from a microscopic standpoint so this is the micro in the sense when it comes to your uh, your, your account's observation the micro is you want bambus right now right you want to if you committed to the fusion you're farming to get him so that's the ultimate goal but the macro will say okay I need to use just enough resources to make sure that I have my solution for the micro, but I also want to think long term down the road. So what, what will benefit me if I were to save my shards today or, or during champion chase instead of spinning on them, I would save them. What would be the value for that? Well, we've been getting a lot of um, guaranteed champions, particularly for the voids lately. I've been noticing they've been dropping a lot of voids and they're all pretty decent. So like if you haven't gotten your solution to an unkillable team, there's been plenty of options there. There's a lot, right? And you got the best wave clearance seer that just recently uh, occurred not too long ago. And then Aniri, who's phenomenal in a lot of more recent content, like Sand Devil, she's one of the staple champions for meta uh, as a part of like a duo comp or whatever. But uh, very, very valuable champions, right? Um, what would we say about potentially the chance of them doing maybe a legendary for, for Ancients or uh, Sacreds for that matter? You know, we haven't seen any of those in a long time. Maybe they don't do them anymore. However, uh, we don't have that information, or I personally don't have that information at the moment uh, since I'm still working my way to get inside the, pl the player and partnership program. But as of right now, my standpoint is this. Uh, better to have and not need than the need and not have, right? So I am in the mindset that maybe 
just maybe we consider not pulling during these events. We'll have to see if there's anything else that's more incentivizing for us to pull. So we're kind of on standby, but there is a potential chance that I could skip maybe one of these events as a result of it. So I'm in, I'm in a really good spot right now, right? Now, moving forward, I think uh, the best way that you can kind of prepare yourself uh, is just to make sure you're aware of what you're going to need in the future, but also appropriately, at the very least, do the bare minimum to get what you need for the the, the Bambus Fusion to get done. So that's my general idea of like how I'm presenting this. I'm presenting you guys questions that I'm asking myself as I'm looking within this Fusion, as I'm farming within this Fusion calendar. And as of right now, I'm doing okay. I'm doing great. I'm on top of... Uh, I'm on top of all the current active events that are that are available to me. As a matter of fact, I'm also ahead because of the extra summon and the summon rush bonus that we got with the epic. So I got a lot of like room for error. Doesn't mean I'm gonna slack off, but it does mean I have the opportunity that if I wanted to, I could choose a couple of you know champion cha uh, champion tournaments or a couple of events here and there that I maybe just want to let go right. Now, with that being said, we are going into the next week, so I'm gonna look at Tuesday all the way up until Wednesday as our next part of the focus for this. Uh, we do have Dungeon Divers 2 event, uh, coming up uh, in the halfway point of tomorrow. So probably by the time you wake up, if you're in the North American range or region, you'll probably see this and you'll already be active inside the event. If you're on the European, uh, the European side or on the other side of the, of the globe, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, it being available pretty much uh, early in the afternoon or early in the morning for you guys as, as well. Like It's going to come a little bit sooner, I believe. Uh, and what's going to be available for you right now is you have a little bit of Ice Golem. If you haven't finished that up, this will be the great time to actually put your foot into it and really make some progression uh, in Ice Golem tournaments so you can lo lock in that Meat Carver. And then you'll get a little bit of points into Dungeons Divers. At this point in time, if you have a need for something, since we have a little bit of a grace period between Ice Golem uh, into Fire Knight, so you know you have like a, it overlaps exactly on the very end. Uh, if you finish it ahead of time during Tuesday, but it's not Wednesday yet, what you could do is you could conserve your resources or use your resources to catch up on some, some things you didn't need, like your energy, for example, right? It's all about energy management in this particular fusion. So are you good on your potions? If not, is there, if there's a keep that's uh, opening up right now that you could get a little bit extra out of them, this would be a great time to maybe toss a little bit of energy here. Or are you in a place where like you got all the po uh, potions you need, you're solid over here, but you wouldn't mind getting a little bit more silver because you're going into Artifact Enhancement 2 going into Wednesday. This will be a great time to maybe slip in a couple extra runs into spider so you can get some energy you see how like your, your progression should be based off of or your consumption of resources should be based off of your needs right the more prepared you are the less the less you know uh demanding these resources are going to be strained of course i would prefer that if i were to save my resources and prepare before fusion i have adequate enough resources to a point where i could just conserve and we wait and we're on standby and we're chilling and we're waiting until the next event comes in and then we full send right but if you're not, if you're one of those type of people that you kind of caught this into like uh, you weren't sure, but now you're kind of like, all right, I need to make sure I, I keep up and you want to get to a point where you're on pace, maybe even get ahead, then you're going to have to be aware of your consumption of resources. Maybe you spent a little too much on Artifact Enhancement 1. This is a great time to kind of basically course correct some of the resource uh, deprivation issues you may be having on your, uh, on your account. So this is a great time to do it. Now, with that being said, after after this Dungeon Divers event too, uh, we have a champ training event. We already talked about artifact enhancements, pretty much just a matter of silver and gear. Whatever you're gonna plus up, plus it up. Remember, I I, I told you guys before, but like uh, enchanting accessories is a little bit more demanding in, in terms of silver. I don't know if it's just my luck or or whatever the case may be, but for some reason I've been finding that like enchanting accessories are a lot more expensive. So I would lean towards artifacts, maybe even look for artifacts that are already plus twelve or higher, and maybe finally take them to sixteen if you're if they're good pieces for you. Uh, get that finished, but Fire Knight's gonna be a big one. Um, I don't believe there's any other intrinsic, uh, events that are currently active in this period, so pretty much it's gonna be a grind through most of Wednesday, Thursday, and, uh, pretty much the portion of Friday, uh, in Dungeon Divers 2 and Fire Knight Tournament. But, when we get to Friday is when we got the big old summoning event. This is gonna be a big one for a lot of, for a lot of accounts. Some people have been holding and stockpiling some Ancients, so Champion Chase Tournament would be a good time right here for you to be able to do it. Uh, another another way that you can also get some value to right now is that you're gonna have to, a lot of summons going through, so processing some food during this period may not be an unhealthy measure. As a matter of fact, this is a perfect segue. Around this time frame, I normally recommend players that if you haven't already, this will be a great time to go into your fusion section and start getting these champions either already progressed during that tournament period so like right here for champ training tournament on thursday i would start leveling up these resources here that are going to go towards this fusion and and get them ready so that when 
Friday comes when that Champ Chase event starts, you can fuse, get some extra points that way towards Champion Chase, and that's before you even touch a single shard, right? And, and basically, you're making progression to, to elevate the food that's going to be converted into Bambus, and this will be a great time to do it during that period. Hopefully, by this period, you're already kind of making significant headway with Judge of Divers 2 and Fire, uh, Fire Knight tournaments, so you don't really have to worry about it as much, but I would definitely... Keep that in, in mind and then set some time aside to make sure that you could take care of champ training as well as, you know, once the champion chase comes out, if you had some fragment summons you wanted to summon or some shards you've been waiting to rip, you know, definitely get into it and have some fun with it. Now, if you want me to do it uh, to pull your shards, I, I definitely do uh, my streams on Tuesdays through Fridays on twitch.tv slash soul saint. It's soul saint with a zero instead of no. Uh, however, I want to encourage you guys, if you do want me to, I normally open up a queue and we just run it down. We start, you know, I, there's been times where I spent like a whole day and I'm just pulling shards with everybody in the community. It's such a fun time. I'm losing my voice screaming, being happy for you guys and be like, oh my God, it's a Kyoko or it's a, it, it's a Red House or, it's a, or if I see an Ugo, I'm just like, you know, it's a, it's a fun time. The whole point about it is that you get, you get to be a part of the event and it, you can share your experience with other people if you so choose to. It's not required. It's not mandatory. But if you do, uh, normally around these time frames when you have like big events like Champion Chase or the Summer Rush, you can see a lot of us get ready to, to kind of gear up for a big day of just nothing but summoning amongst different accounts. So that's something you can look forward to. Now, with that being said, also occurring on Friday, we have Classic Arena. Kind of the similar circumstance as Classic Arena Takedown 1. I did notice that I was, uh, when I was doing Classic Arena 1, uh, I did say like roughly, uh, you know, just your daily should be able to do it. So, you you know, the 10 that you start off with with a day, the five you get from the quest of doing, you know, uh, buying something from the, the merchant sh store or whatever, like one of your daily quests you get. And then I believe you may get another one somewhere else down, down the line, maybe from an advanced quest or something around those lines too. I thought that would be enough within a day. Uh, mind you, I wasn't keeping track of it super carefully in terms of like, okay, I'm o I've only done X amount of runs or X amount of attempts of like uh, uh, arena battles within X amount of days. Like, I don't have an average on par. There was one day where I was feeling hot and I was just constantly doing like a bunch of battles. And another day I was like, it's a little bit more lukewarm. And then towards the end, I was like, okay, let me just make sure I'm good to go. And then I, I pretty much did it. But I didn't go too far out of my way. However, I would say that if you pay attention to this, you have one day, two day, three day, four day. So roughly about four days, maybe four resets. Uh, it'll be very close, maybe three, if you want to be, want to be a little bit more careful about it see how you're doing and then maybe devote some extra resources along the way but at the very least maintaining a pace i talked about this before in the, our previous video about bambus or fusions in general is all about pacing yourself if you do too much in one go you may miss an overlap that may be beneficial for you right the same thing is also true on an individual basis maybe there's no other lab but it's just classic arena pace yourself maybe instead of burning those extra refills you have in your inventory that you've been you know getting from maybe a pack you bought or something like that slow it down a little bit let's see let's see how the terrain's looking as you're progressing like the last one was roughly around like 390 points and that's fairly easy to get if you're progressing at a decent rate especially the higher up you are uh with arena as a matter of fact there it is right there perfectly as soon as i got mine i started chilling out now i'm doing my dailies i'm doing some extra farming because you know i'm still upgrading my great hall but for the most part 390 was pretty much around roughly what you needed and it's Boom, you're done to go. You're good to go. So it's like one tournament out of the mind. You don't have to worry about it too much more. Now, I always encourage you guys to keep your resources down pretty much on zero, which I need to go and do after this video. Uh, but the main idea is that you're constantly maintaining some level of progression daily. If you feel like, oh, I didn't spend a whole day towards doing anything, but you know you have stuff you need to do, then you might want to caution yourself because what that means is that if you don't pick up the pace in the remaining days, you're going to end up finding yourself at a lack of points and you're going to end up falling behind, right? And it could be resulting in you missing the one time that you needed a specific rare and that, that could throw your chances off of Bambus altogether. So we don't want that to happen, so stay on top of it, right? But keep and maintain a pace. Now... After that, we go into Saturday, where we're going to have our overlap of Fire Knight and Dungeon Divers. So this is around the period where you're going to want to make sure you're concluding Fire Knight. Fire Knight should be done roughly around this point when you see Dungeon Divers event number three. Now, Spider Tournament is also going to be kicking in roughly around the same time frame. So rest assured, you don't have to stay in Fire Knight after you're done with the tournament. You can go straight into Spider Tournament with Dungeon Divers event three, and pretty much you have your overlap there. And then lastly, we talked about it, Artifact Enhancer 3. You can just jump into it and you're good to go. But at this point in time, let's do an inventory check. You have, I would say, at the very least, one Epic's worth for summons. So if we're going to go into our portal, we have enough for at least one summon. Now, mind you, I did get an extra, I get, I did get an extra uh, Magic Champion, so you know I'll exclude that from my mindset. But technically, if you were to include a second one, or maybe by the time you finish off... 
uh, your Dungeon Divers number two, you should have enough for at least two epics at this point in time. So be on the lookout to make sure it's like, okay, I technically already have one epic done. I'm good to go so far. I'm on pace. Yeah, you should have like basically one, maybe one and a half. You want to add like the extra residuals that you got from like me, Carver, you know, it's pretty much the main one. And then Selenia. Selenia is the other one that you should have a duplicate of at this point in time. But uh, the way it is, force, you'd have three. Uh, Void, you have two, and then the other ones, which is Magic and uh, Spirit, you have one at, at this point in time. You should have at least that much going into it. And then as long as you are maintaining it, you'll get the other resources you need to basically get the last little bit you need for all the rest of the, the epics you're going to be needing to, to make to make Bambus. And then at that point, it's a good game. Now, I did want to give you guys, because I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing another follow-up video on Bambus himself. Let's take a look at where we're at. As of right now, I am in Tuesday, or Monday, it is the 2nd. We don't have a CVC, I believe, this week, so we don't have to worry about it. So Tuesday, we don't have to worry about anything. But on the 10th, we are going to have a CVC. They haven't announced if it's going to be personal awards or a, uh, you know, a PR or non-PR CVC. So at this point in time, I will say this. If you go down a week, you still have four days left, which means 10, 11, 12, maybe even 13 at that point. So you have all of this week to, to basically fuse him. What I would suggest is even though you may finish this event fairly early on, you know, maybe you finish it on Monday or Sunday when all these events are active. This is the last little bit you need. You're, you pretty much get everything and you want to you want to crack them open. I would suggest waiting because during Tuesday we should have a fusion event where you're going to have another uh, another champion to have to work. You know, it's another 30,000 points that you're going to get for free. So why not? And I recommend players do that. Uh, but as of right now, I definitely think that it's important for people to, you know, just be aware of where you're at on your in your progression. If you got an epic, just remember this. You could take one of, it's, it's not four of your choosing because we have different rares we have to account for. But one of each rare type of, like, so it, it'll be like in rows in this case. If you see, like, it's a shade. Uh, you could take one off of each row. Instead of it being one off of any of that you care about, because we, we are doing, dealing with different rares. So if you got Malkith, one off of each row, you could take one event away and just say, I don't want to worry about it. I'm done with it. And you'll be better off for it because you already have an extra. Now, if you wanted to keep him as an extra uh, champion for you to utilize, maybe use for content down the road, then you, you, you're going to want to make sure you're staying on top of all these events at that point. You, should, you already have an inventory check of where you're at. So with that being said, I hope this fusion goes well for you guys. I've been seeing a little bit more of an inspiration behind like, oh, this champion actually may have a little bit more to contribute, which is why I always recommend players not to be premature on their speculation. And, you know, of course, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're getting your bang for your buck. So more research is always a, a, an improvisation to give you a better, better educated mind uh, mindset about what you're dealing with. But either way, I think this is going to be a fun, pretty, so far, pretty relaxed uh, so, uh, fusion, I feel like, compared to some of our previous ones, like uh, Newt and... Uh, I would even say Emic, for example, those are a little bit more demanding in terms of fusion. So this one, I'm not, I didn't participate in the strategist one, so I'm not entirely sure how difficult that was. This one feels a lot more relaxed compared to the other ones I did deal with, though. So we're kind of cruising along, we're kind of, we're kind of doing great. I got a couple extra summons along the way, so I'm, I'm very, I'm coasting right now. If you're not there and you you want to make sure you're on top of things you know now what it is okay now with that being said don't forget to like comment subscribe on this video if you enjoyed it and as always guys i want to thank you guys for being super supportive we're already on our way to like 600 subscribers now and i, I can't even believe it i barely i barely felt like i i earned it like i've been hustling now but like i feel like it's it's just so unfathomable how far we've made and i want to thank you guys for it i do want to encourage you guys that if you haven't already considered watching a couple extra of our videos to support the the channel you're more than welcome to uh, we have a couple playlists available to you, including Raid if you want to, or some variety content if you're interested. Uh, we are almost, and I'm not even kidding you when I say this, I think we're over two-thirds of the way there towards our watch hour uh, period for... Uh, YouTube partnership program, which is another big milestone that I'm achieve I'm trying to achieve. So I want to encourage you guys if you want to help me out, please and thank you for your continued support. Now, with that being said, always, always remember, stay ascended.